Now with the transmission out, we're gonna go ahead and start stripping the rear end of this bike. I'm gonna start with the rear brake line here, remove that first, get the axle pulled, and then continue disassembling the rest of the parts here. So we'll get the right wrench for the rear brake line here. We'll get this pulled. I know I've got a lot of wiring back here. Got kind of a mess on my hands. So we'll go ahead and we'll start picking at this stuff and we'll get this apart as we can. Now with the rear brake line out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rear axle of this bike. I know that the rear caliper is integrated into the swing arm and it all needs to be unbolted. I know there's an adjuster here to keep this from moving. This is one of the things that Harley did for a little while too to keep this stuff from kind of vibrating all over the place. A different little setup and I'll show you that once I pull it off. But first we're gonna yank this rear axle. One of the hindsight things, I should have loosened this rear axle before I pulled the swing arm. Didn't think about it, but I can hold it in place and get this axle nut off. With the axle not out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt the shocks from the swing arm itself. I wanna get that ready to remove too, so I'll go ahead and loosen all these up next. And then from there, I'm gonna pull the axle and the rear wheel. With my three quarter socket on my impact and my three quarter wrench, we'll get this loosened. Now we'll move to the other side and do the same thing. With the rear shocks removed, or able to be removed, now I'm going to push the axle to the other side here. Sometimes these old axles take a little persuasion, so we'll go ahead and knock it through. Now that the axle's removed, it's time to actually remove this rear caliper. So I'm gonna remove the brake line stay. With that, that out of the way, I'm going to remove the brake line caliper bracket that goes around the swing arm.
that bracket out of the way with a little adjuster. It's got a little adjuster on the bottom there to create tension against the swing arm. Now I should be able to drop this wheel out of the way. I think we're going to guide the swing arm down at this point because it is not hooked to anything. And that rear chain guard is still giving me fits. That's actually holding everything kind of in place right now. And I'm not exactly sure how that comes apart all the way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove these rear shocks. I'm gonna tip the rear axle or the rear swing arm out and see if I can get this to come apart. Because I'm not sure exactly how that's affixed between the wheel and this. I know the sprockets inside there. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to pull this apart. I'm not sure how to pull it apart is what I'm gonna say. I know I have to separate the two halves in order to get the, the sprocket out of there, but I'm not sure how that comes off of the swing arm itself. We'll have to see how that goes. So next, we're gonna pull these rear shocks. With the rear shocks out of the way, I should be able to tip this swing arm, wheel, and everything and guide it out. So I'm going to make a little room here in order to do that and then figure out how I'm going to pull this thing apart. I was finally able to get that rear chain guard off. It's quite the unit, honestly. As you can see, there's the two rubber boots, and then the sprocket itself actually has a spacer built into it. It's got the bearing attached to it, and then of course there is the cover for the chain that goes over the sprocket, and then it's supposed to protect the rear wheel. One of the things I ran into on why I couldn't get this apart was there's actually an internal piece in here, and all these things were covered in grease, and I couldn't see the studs here, that one rounded out, unfortunately. But what I did discover is that the bottom of it is busted. And I'm thinking the chain must have broke, or not broke, I mean we found the, or I found the clip inside there. I'm thinking what happens, the chain spit out the bottom of this. So that's where the chain went. Crazy to know. The shop is an enormous mess right now. I've got parts scattered everywhere. I've got grease all over the floor. I've got grime all over. This place is gonna need one heck of a good cleaning when I'm done. But I'm still not finished for the day. I've got a couple hours left to work here and I need to get this rear fender and the rear end of this bike disassembled. So I'm gonna start right here. Next up is going to be the passenger backrest and grab bar. So all I need to do here is unbolt this and it looks like there's not Looks like the fender's still intact. Commonly when I run into these, the, the nut is welded to the fender on the bottom side of these. Often, that's not the case, often that's, that nut has broke off, so you can't actually remove this grab bar. In this case, the nuts are still welded to the bottom side of the fender, 
So I should be able to remove these easily. These are a half inch bolt, there's just two of them. I should be able to take these out real quick and then this grab bar will come right off. There's obviously this mount point in the back that I'd already removed when I took the seat off. If I would have known that these were gonna come out as easily, I would have taken this off already. With that grab bar removed, I'm gonna remove these two bolts right here and this bolt right here, and I think that is all that's holding the fender on. I know there's wiring for the tail light here for this rear light, so I'll go ahead and unhook that real quick just to make sure that I'm not ripping any wiring out. From what I'm seeing, all the wiring runs right through this little hole in the fender here and then out and along the fender. So what I'm gonna do is actually unbolt this oil bag next, get that out of the way, and there should be a junction here that I can actually unplug, and I'm gonna work on that. So we'll start by cutting some of these wire ties. Obviously, there were tons of these on this bike that are holding everything kind of in place. I like to get them all out of place so I don't have them hang up. With the oil bag out of the way, we'll unbolt the fender here and here, and then everything should be able to come apart completely. I do have two screw heads, one on each side here and here, to remove these covers. So I'm gonna start with the screws, and then we'll work on the bolts next. Unfortunately, like most of these welded on nuts, they do break free eventually, and the one on the bottom side that holds the fender in place is not welded any longer. So I'm gonna find a wrench, get on the back side, hold it in place, and then unbolt the fender.
With the fender unbolted completely, now I just have some wiring to move around and untie and unzip tie. And once those things are untied, this fender should come out. I believe this is the wiring that was supposed to tie into the tour pack, which should have ran all the lights and probably the antenna. Unfortunately, this bike did not come with a tour pack. Based on the damage to the rear fender, I feel that the tour pack probably was smashed. More wire ties. You have the zip ties clipped. Why use one when you can use three? Now that the fender is moving, I see that there is wiring coming out on this side too. There's so much grime and dirt underneath here that I can't actually see all of the wiring running through this fender. So I know there should be a plug somewhere close here that I can undo. And once that's undone, this fender is ready to be removed. One more wire tie, I believe, that's going to be in the way. We'll get this cut. With that cut, this should be all the wiring for this rear fender here. Maybe one more ground, possibly. Let's figure out where that one goes. Fender should drop out of the way now. There we are, the fender's removed. As you can see, that damage on the top there is pretty substantial. I have no idea what would have hit that or caused that. It honestly looks like the butt of a 2x4 came down and smashed right into this thing. But then there's another mark here, so. If only this bike could tell me its story. With the rear fender removed, now the rack is just sitting here, so I should be able to just to pull it out of place. Looks like there's maybe, nope, nothing holding it in place that I can see, besides maybe tension. There's the rear rack. Unfortunately, I don't have the key for this. I wish that I did. It didn't come with a key for that. I have a key for everything else. I have the gas cap key, the ignition key, and the saddlebag key. Unfortunately, the saddlebag key and this key are not the same. With that removed, I'm gonna leave the loop that's in the back here. I'm gonna leave that on the bike. I don't see a reason to take that out. So the only thing I really have to do now is get the motor out and get the front end off of this bike. It's currently supported properly on the stand and that's where it's going to sit for the night. I do need to go through and pull all the wiring out of this bike, get that all back fed up to the head here. And then once I've got that all back fed up to the head there, then it's all in one good organized chaotic mess. Obviously I see there's quite a few more wire ties along this bike that are not factory that I'm going to have to cut. So I've got a few minutes of cutting cable ties here to get this wiring to move to its proper spot, which is at the head of the bike. This is as far as I'm going to go for now today. I appreciate you guys following along. I know these videos are lengthy, and I, I'm glad that you guys are sticking through them. Uh, it seems to be this is an interesting topic. Obviously, I've got quite a few followers now, and I've got quite a few new subscribers that are coming along to watch this process. I do love tearing these old bikes down. I love seeing how they work. I like seeing you know the differences in them i like seeing the issues that arise when you take them apart because you know they've been fixed for the last 44 years 43 years it's to me really cool to see the differences in each model each year the changes that happen especially through the amf years 
there were so many different things that happened with these bikes during those times that's kind of hard to keep up with. I mean, some of these part numbers are one year only, half a year, they did all kinds of weird things then. And it's neat for me to be able to see them. Now I don't part them all out. There are some bikes that obviously I put back together. Some of them don't make sense to put back together. This bike, for me, this is not one of those types of bikes that sells together. This is the type of bike that is gonna sell better in pieces. And this bike selling in pieces will help others that are putting them together to do such. Anyway guys, I appreciate you following along. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. If you're one of my uh, shorts followers, please check out my shorts feed. I try to pull something on there every day as well. If not, you know, I know there's not a whole lot of crossover. That's okay too. Anyway guys, thanks. Take care. We'll see you soon.